From Port Harcourt, the capital of River State, lies a strategic national asset in Alessa Eleme, some 25 kilometers east of Port Harcourt. This is the Port Harcourt Refineries. Regarded as Nigeria's primary refinery, the Port Harcourt Refinery Company Limited comprises the oldest and the newest of government-owned refineries. Both are embedded in one complex. The first was built in 1965 with capacity of 35,000 barrels per stream day. And by 1972, it got increased to 60,000 barrels. While the second was commissioned in 1989, the combined production capacity, 210,000 barrels per stream day. Install capacity of about 150,000. But someday, somehow, some things started going south, and these plants were stripped of their operational life. Outputs dwindled until three years ago when a decision was made to shut it down altogether. So, in the history of this refinery, it has only undergone maintenance only three times, and the last time was in 2000, 21 years ago. Those times were 1992, 1994, and the year 2000, two and six years intervals. What we are trying to do now, different, is not just turnaround maintenance. It's a big brother of turnaround maintenance, which is total rehabilitation. And at this point, we've taken time to really come through the facility, did a detailed inspection around the whole facility, established clearly what we need to do to bring these facilities to almost brand new status. That will guarantee all these operations, at least a minimum of 90% of this capacity and beyond. Let's talk about the yields and the value it brought to the domestic market when it worked. It produced 11.5 million liters of PMS, 9 million liters of AGO, that is diesel, 5 million liters of DPK, that is dual purpose kerosene, 4.6 million liters of fuel oil, and 1.3 million liters of LPG per day production. All that is at zero levels as of this material time. We had gradual deterioration of the plants, and then that kept on reducing, you know, the capacity utilization until it came very close to less than 20 percent and became almost an economic to run. Some 7.5 kilometers away, as a jetty that serves the refinery's crude supply and evacuation line linked by these pipelines. Here you could see signs of aging on the facility, from the twin loading arm that can receive crude from vessels and also discharge refined petroleum products to compressors, pumps, valves, everything is requiring some form of attention. As strenuous as these stories sound to the mind, the federal government says it has mapped out a strategy to bring this facility up to 90% output performance in the ongoing rehabilitation which has since commenced here. Now the big question is, can this refinery be fixed? And in terms of cost optimization, what's the better option? Build, rehabilitate or sell? The refineries are very much like aircraft, you can always fix them. So being aware that you have an asset in your hand that you own and uh, that you can fix, uh, selling is not, will never be your first option. We're looking at the opportunities to build new refineries and also take equity in refineries that are being built and of course, you know, most speedily and much, much, much more easily to, to rehabilitate our own refinery that is in our hands. So we know that uh, we're not taking federation money to, to rehabilitate this refinery, contrary to what many people believe that, okay, could have used this money for something else. We're not taking it from the federation. We are borrowing from a, consul a, cons a consortium of banks, you know, headed by Afrexim and very many other financing institutions. So we have no fears around financing because uh, we're not going to take federation money to do it. The duration for the rehabilitation has been put at 44 months, but the group managing director NMPC Malamele Kayari says the project has been faced in a manner that first oil will be achieved quickly by month 18, then 32 months and 44 months accordingly, when the entire complex including the 56 megawatts embedded power plant would have undergone a complete rehabilitation and ready for recommissioning. Olu Phillips, Channels Television News.